Hello and welcome to the penultimate Quizzy Monday of the series and what a Quizzy Monday it's going to be. We have five of the competitors uh, or contenders I should say from the Mastermind Grand Final including the newly crowned champion Ruth Hart. We'll be speaking to them very very soon. Uh, we won't be doing our usual coverage of University Challenge. There'll be just too much to talk about with Mastermind and next week is the UC final anyway. Uh, we won't be going through nominees for Quizzer and Team of the Week. We'll release those during the week. A little bit of uh, information this week. Uh, the winner of Quiz of the Week is Jack Pollock for winning the OQL International Competition, Yodagash Route, winning the Tournament of Champions in uh, Jeopardy in America, and Ruth for winning her semi final, uh, was third last week. Uh, Imperial won their Heat University Challenge or semi final last week. Uh, they were first. Sussex winning uh, Quiz League of London's uh, President's Cup, and third was this team from Australia for winning the Victoria Quiz Championship as a team. Um, this week's What is the Question? The winner. Well, last week's winner was this question by Richard Aubrey in a Graham Green screenplay of Kurtz and Popescu are first and second, who is the third. So that was his winning question. This week's uh, answer in need of a question is Rome, and you can now vote at tinyurl.com slash WITQ Rome to try and find our winner. So, uh, oh, and lunchtime quiz time is every day on Facebook and X. So, Enough of that. Um, just to remind you in the chat, you can be uh, popping questions in uh, and comments, but let's bring on our mastermind finalists. So let's bring Ruth, Sarah, George, Helen, and Ollie on. Evening, everybody. Hello. Hi, guys. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic to have you all on. Um, a brilliant, brilliant final. Really enjoyable to watch. Uh, I do have to play this. There you go. Congratulations, Ruth, our new Mastermind champion. And uh, yes, I did have to make one of those for each of the competitors, but uh, that one's yours. Uh, and congratulations, Ruth. How does it feel? Thank you. Um, it feels really overwhelming, incredible. Um, it didn't feel real until the last few days and probably tonight. So uh, it feels wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, as a as a bin kind, of, is there much fuss coming your way? You know, local press, loads of media, lots of attention. Um, I I've already made it into the Glasgow Herald. Um, there's a, there's an article up there. Um, my mum, so you probably all saw my mum in the little VT. <laughs> my mum is making sure that it's going into the Ayrshire Post, which is the local paper where I grew up. Um, so yeah, the, the big time. I've made it to the big time, I think. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, we got some comments in the cat, uh, chat. Catherine Burkett saying congratulations to the champions, winners, congratulations to runner up. Um, I think she wants to edit, look at another comment. Um, and um, what else have we got? That's that's about it. As normal, uh, a lot of our viewers are then just going away and chatting amongst themselves already. Um, and um, something like, yeah, I don't even understand what's going on. So, uh, Ruth, uh, you um, kind of had, we heard about your sort of emotional journey, I guess, uh, with um, um, this being, being kind of almost a tribute to your father. Did you feel that kind of gave you any pressure or did it kind of give you a bit of a lift um, through the process? Yeah, no, I, I think very much the latter. Um, I think um, particularly before the first round where I, I know some people like Sarah as well, we're not people who've been on TV quizzes before and done lots of that. So um, for the first round, I thought, there were lots of times where I thought, why on earth am I doing this? I'm clearly going to humiliate myself on national television. Um, so certainly that, and through the whole process, it, it did, it gave me a boost um, thinking that, you know, I was I was doing it for a reason. I was doing it in tribute. Um, so yeah, yeah, it, it definitely, um, it was really nice just to have it to focus on, to be honest, last year. So um, mm. maybe that's a, a kind of a, yeah, a, a, a sort of hallmark mastermind story, but um, it was, yeah, a nice focus when I, it was a very difficult time last year and it, it definitely gave me a boost, uh, especially into the final because it, it takes over your whole life. So um, it's quite an intense few months, as I'm sure you all know. Absolutely is intense. Um, I, I had a similar situation when I was in the 15 to one grand final and I felt it just took the pressure off me because when the worst thing in the world has happened, um, actually what happens in a quiz 
you know is not it's not anywhere near that so in a way it, you know it did the same for me but um yeah your father would be absolutely so proud uh, as your mum undoubtedly is as she's shopping around to try and find you more media appearances um <laughs> but you all did brilliantly all did brilliant to get through your, your first round your semi-final into the final you all did brilliantly in the uh in in the final um but ollie we've got a question for you um rumor is ollie went on a pub crawl before the semi-final please can you confirm yeah that's 100 percent true <laughs> uh, I actually... <laughs> Uh, I did discuss this with the, the producers, but they didn't want it appearing in my VT. <laughs> so didn't make it in. Amazing. Um, was that at home or in Belfast? No, it was in Belfast. I met up with a friend, um, another Hanson who's unrelated to me. And yeah, his whole family were there and they were giving me lots of questions that definitely didn't come up on Mean Girls and things like that. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's many things that people would advise before going on a TV quiz show, you know, like getting a good night's sleep, being well hydrated, etc. That's probably not top of this. Did anybody else have any um, odd preparation or any kind of any, um, by the time you get to the final, maybe any superstitions? Um, oh, I, uh, okay. oh, sorry, you go on, George. Um, I, I ordered pizza from the same takeaway um, in Belfast before all three rounds. Um, that one on the corner? No, it was some. Oh. I, I think it was called Pizza Guys. Other pizza places are available, and um, yeah, I, 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 I'm not saying it was the cause of me getting through uh, to the final. Just that the pizza was really good, and I couldn't be bothered to look for uh, a second one when I went back <laughs> for the semi. So I thought, uh, stick with what you know. <laughs> Ruth, it, it felt like you had something you're about to throw in because we all want to know yeah. what makes a champion. Oh, well, uh, um, so I, I wore the same jewelry. I had the necklace. Um, I wore the same earrings, but similar to George, actually, I did the same thing with food. So um, I ate in the hotel the first time, and then I thought I have to keep doing that. So I did that every time. Yeah. I mean, routine. I mean, Helen, you've been on the show three different series. Thanks for reminding me. Did you, <laughs> sorry, did you learn anything from those, that, those uh, attempts that you successfully kind of brought into your prep this time around um yeah trying to well get the good night's sleep i never quite managed that but i know it's really important um and yeah meditating really helps just kind of clear your mind it lets you um watch all those thoughts about what if it all goes wrong what if i trip up and you know make a tit of myself so i, I did have quite a sort of mapped out routine that just sort of helped ground me but i don't I wouldn't call it superstition um it was just i've got to do something so that i know what i'm doing otherwise i'm just going to be like headless chicken yeah and sarah this was all new for you yeah. um how did you kind of grow into the experience i guess um I think it was just about trying to sleep and trying to get that routine and just trying not to panic too much. But um, yeah, it, it's, it's, it, it was just that thing of having my flashcards and just keeping things ticking over just to try and stay focused, which was easier yeah. for the final because that was we, we, were, we were straight into it in the morning, whereas both my heat and my semi-final were the very end of the day. So we were absolutely yeah. hanging by the time we got to, to studio. Mm um another ollie another question for you um huge fan of ollie's socks where did you buy them <laughs> this is stuff everyone wants to know <laughs> i think i think all the socks i wore were from a company called happy socks so yeah oh well, there you go oh, yeah, um, there's, a, there's a plug for them <laughs> um now one of the critical things is obviously a specialist subject and you've been through the process twice um did that inform your choice, um, start with you, Ruth, of what you were going to do in the final? Or was that all already kind of decided from before you kind of filmed the first show? Uh, no. So for me, the subject in the final was, uh, yeah, decided after the semi semi-final. Um, and for all three, though, I, 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 at the beginning, I really didn't feel that I'm an expert on anything. Um, so I just went with things that I enjoy. I thought I'm going to enjoy studying these subjects. I'm really going to enjoy reading about them and exploring them. Um, so yeah, I, I, I went with that, and I think it it worked out really well with Francis Bacon. I, he's been I, I've, I've been in love with his paintings um, and the life and the man uh, since I was a teenager. So um, yeah, that seemed to work well. 
Yeah, there's a very, lot to be said for not overthinking the strategy, isn't there, with specialist subjects? Yeah, yeah. Um, something something you enjoy doing, something you can kind of nail, have clear parameters. Um, it was a good subject. Ollie on uh, Wimbledon singles championships in the twenty first century, both men and women's. That's a hell of a lot of content yeah. to get your head around. Did you regret that at any point? I mean, yes and no. I mean, <laughs> it was very, very hard to revise, and like my specialist subject round didn't go as well as everyone else's, but it was such a joy to revise it, so I, I don't regret it. And obviously, the VT filming at Wimbledon was was one of the highlights of the whole experience. So, absolutely yeah. no regrets from me. And in terms of the celebrity kind of <clears throat> call or, or or kind of assistance on the VT, Andy Murray, it's got to be yeah, a pretty. Yeah, it's not bad. Uh, is it? It's not bad. Yeah. I mean, Helen's there gnashing her teeth that, you know, she couldn't get anything from Sappho from this. Oh. <laughs> it wasn't available. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yes, uh, that was that was a tough one. Sappho, Helen, I mean, I don't know enough about the subject, but is this uh, a classic case of somebody about whom not is not a lot is known and there's not a huge amount of work, therefore is it quite a canny subject? Was that why you went for her? <laughs> I thought it was a canny subject at the time because there's not much known about her biographically. It's all rather, some of it's quite legendary and not, mm -hmm. you know, not verifiable. Um, and also there's only 600 extant lines of poetry and some of them mm -hmm. are literally just one or two lines. Mm -hmm. So I sort of thought that could be an advantage that I don't have m massive doorstop books, but actually they're mm -hmm. so dense and I missed some things that were in the poetry so mm. yeah I, I could have done more so it was partly because I, I wanted to bring the subject out and I do love her poetry but yeah there were things I could have done differently but no no yeah. regrets like Ollie it's just you, you get on with it and it is what it is you make your choice and yeah Sarah you had a, another one that you, you enjoyed you, Mercury Prize you got a call from uh, Lauren Laverne or a VT from Lauren Laverne, so that was a thrill. Um, was th did that turn out to be a good choice from your perspective? You know, did it turn out to be a deeper subject than you expected? Um, I think it's one of those things that sometimes the question setters will go in a slightly different mm. direction to you. Mm. And I did a lot of the list learning of, 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 of you know, the real list learning of nominees and, and, and artists and everything. And they did more than I expected of what happened in the ceremonies. Mm. So it was almost using those ceremonies as mm. a narrative. And there mm. were things in there that I think even if I'd watched them a million times, I would have never have picked up on. So, mm. but it was, it was a really nice thing to sort of sit and watch all of the ceremonies that I could, we could get hold of mm. and just sort of see the progression of the awards through the years. Mm. Excellent. And, and finally, um, George Clara Schumann, biographical topics, always good. You've got a personal connection with the, the classical music side of things. Um, happy with, with your choice there? Um, not not a hundred percent happy in the sense I didn't get a hundred percent of the questions right, but uh, it was a good um, it's a good subject to revise. Uh, I, I was a little bit similar to uh, Helen, sort of, as she said about Sappho not being much known about her biography. The reason I chose Clara Schumann above other um, classical composers is she's, she didn't actually do that much composing after her husband Robert died. Yeah. It was left to her to bring up the family of eight children, so yeah. she. Um, laid back on the composing after that and she devoted herself to um, her career as a concert soloist which is more lucrative so I thought well I could do Bach which was offered to me or Mozart which is also offered by the producers but they've got about a thousand compositions each to their name whereas Clara Schumann mm. had a few dozen so that was the thinking behind that anyway but I, I very much enjoyed it and uh, great to meet Ice Kane Mason I actually saw yeah. her brother Sheku play the cello in Oslo um, in February uh, who famously played at Meghan and Harry's wedding. So uh, I was very pleased to talk to a, well, firstly, an accomplished pianist and second, mm. you know, one I was familiar with. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. So that's why you picked them all. Um, whilst we've got Ruth, um, because you're going to have to go uh, in a short while, um, 15 out of 15 is the dream performance, isn't it, in, in your mastermind specialist subject. But you seem very calm, focused, quick to respond. Um, absolutely in the zone how how would you done you know how would your prep gone to get you in that position um i think i think a couple of things about that so 
I think after my semi-final performance, which I think I was lucky to make it into the final, um, I went home feeling really pleased that I'd made it, but also thinking I'm really going to have to work at this. So um, I did a lot of practice with my husband, God bless him. Um, the, so I, I thought one thing I need to practice is not passing and just being quick, moving on and on. So we did a lot of practice on that with general knowledge, but with the specialist subject as well. I suppose the, the other main thing I was thinking is that I'm not a massively experienced quizzer. I'm, I'm somebody who's kind of sat at home for years and thought I have okay general knowledge. Um, and I, I thought I really have to have a very, very good specialist subject round to be in with any chance of winning. So I, I for the final, I focused heavily on Francis Bacon um, rather than the general knowledge. And the, the practice I did on that and the little bit, I, the bit I did in general knowledge was focused on just answering and being as quick as I could and moving on and, and staying calm and not sort of losing it if I couldn't think of an answer or, or got the wrong answer so I think those two things um were in my mind going into it yeah and you certainly answered you say everything was the the same tone the same pace you're answering quickly was there anything in, in your in your set of questions that surprised you or was it all in your prep no in in the specialist subject I really felt in the zone I I thought this is it was ideal it was um yeah it was everything that I'd revised came up Mm. Uh, I'm so sorry. I have a little bit of background That's noise. Okay. Um, but yeah, so um, it, it, it just it just worked out. I was I was. There's a bit of luck on the day, isn't there? I was just lucky mm. with what came up as well. Um, you, you need luck to win any quiz, but you also make your own luck by the work that you put in and how you prepare and how you get yourself in that position. Uh, your 15 um, put you in pole position at halfway. There was only um, the the 12 of. Um, of Thomas, which was relatively close. Everybody else was kind of slightly more arm's length. How are you feeling at the halfway point? Were you feeling you've got a good chance here? Did the pressure start to build at that point? Yeah, I, I thought at that point, I thought, I, I think I thought I'm still in with a chance. I'm still mm. in with a chance. Um, I was pleased with Francis Bacon. Um, mm. I knew I had to do that to be in with any chance of mm. standing up to everybody else's general knowledge. So that. The pressure mounted though and it is quite it, it's difficult being the person going last you see everybody mm. else having really good rounds there were fantastic general knowledge rounds yeah. so uh it's nerve-wracking sitting there there were um we got brendan coming in here can't remember when anyone last got 15 a specialist subject clive was reading quite quickly tonight ruth answered quickly i mean that's the crux you you nailed the specialist subject we'll get back to everybody else's once you've you've gone but you knew that you needed 12 um if my mass is correct, uh, yes, uh, to win. Um, and that's one of those difficult sort of scores, really, isn't it? You know, and anything above 10 is good. 12 is, you know, is going to push you. Did you feel when your specialist subject started, you had a very sticky <laughs> patch at the start of that general knowledge? Um, did you feel that it was, it was kind of all going wrong? Because what was amazing was the way you pulled yourself back um into it thank you i think that was that was totally the prep as well yeah yeah i definitely thought it had all gone pear-shaped um yeah. i thought this is awful it, it's really funny watching it back tonight because i think perhaps it didn't seem as bad as it felt at the time um yeah. but it was got off to a rough start and uh, there were some of those questions where i think if i would had longer or just in a different situation i knew the answer and i've been mm -hmm haunted by saying Martin McGuinness instead of David Trimble <laughs> for a long time. Um, but yeah, I, I, I kind of thought, I thought I just need to, I need to do what I did when I was practicing. I need to just keep saying something and moving on and you can't waste time worrying about having had the wrong answer. So just mm -hmm. need to keep things moving. Um, but I've really, it was, it was a big surprise at the end to find yeah. that it's good enough to win. I, I really very much expected Clive to say, mm -hmm. you've missed it, you've just missed it, you know? Um, yeah. yeah, it felt like it had gone terribly wrong. <laughs> that there was a little pause, wasn't there, after the end of the round before he he told you you were the champion. Was that you know, your head swimming at that point? You, you clearly didn't know that you won. So, you know, what were, you, yeah, what were your emotions like? I, um, I thought I thought I've made a mess of this, but I also thought 
I'm proud of myself that I came and gave it a go and I'm proud of myself that I didn't give up and I kept going even when I was getting it wrong so all of those things in a split second I thought at least I tried it you know and it was a great experience to try it yeah well you could have been forgiven to just crumbling under the pressure of being last in a mastermind final and getting a run of five incorrect answers which would floor many a player um, and then to come back and knock off what you did. Yeah, Brendan, impressive that Reese kept a cool in general knowledge. Just um, awesome play. Uh, and you won by a, a, a couple of point margin as well. So um, it was a, a clear margin of victory. Um, so huge congratulations, Ruth, um, on that. Uh, was there a bit of a celebration that night? Were you all in, in Belfast and retiring to a bar? What, what happens after you've won the bowl? um we we all except thomas thomas had a, a a flight back straight after the episode but we all went to the crown afterwards a very famous pub in belfast if yeah. you've been um oh, yeah. and had a drink there and uh, then i went out for dinner my, my family came with me so my husband my mom my sister who you saw in the vt yeah. came with me and it was quite a task to stop my mom from telling everyone in belfast <laughs> <laughs> oh, i'm sure they kept your secret they're very discreet there <laughs> I'm sure. And, and it's, you know, in a way, it's a shame in past series uh, before COVID, you would have had your family in the audience. And I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, but, you know, you you uh, you didn't have that. But at least you had them there for the evening to celebrate with you, which was um, absolutely wonderful. Um, so also, I've just seen a comment by um, by Simon in the chat, which is so, by the by, we'll get to that later. Um, yeah, well, we know you have to go, Ruth. We we know you've got a, a a watch party and a celebration tonight, so we really appreciate um, you coming on. And um, it's just been yeah, joyous. I mean, last week you had a great performance uh, to come through into the into the final. Today, you know, one of one of the all time great especially subject performances and and a very good general knowledge round, a very deserving winner, Ruth. Um, so congratulations. I hope that the glow of this lasts a good long while. Um, any further plans for quizzing? Um, I, I have, so I've taken a little break. I'm going to sign up for the online quiz league that I'm, yeah, you're, you're all part of and familiar <laughs> with, um, and maybe do something local in Glasgow as well. Okay. Um, and well, just before I go, um, like I said, I'm a bit of a novice in the quizzing world and i i really can't say enough what what a lovely experience it was with really really incredibly nice people um as mastermind contenders like it was lovely to meet all of these people and spend time with them and get to know them but it's been really nice to sort of join the quizzing world i suppose mm. and you know become familiar with well all things quiz and and mm. other accounts and things that i'm following so um I feel really lucky to have found this and to be part of it now. Well, we're, we're delighted that you're able to come on and uh, very happy for you. Um, so all that's left really is to repeat congratulations to Ruth. Um, I'm going to play that uh, little that video because hang on, I'm, I made it. So I'm going to play it twice now. Um, and then, uh, then feel free to click leave studio and then go and enjoy the rest of your night. But, Ruth, once more, congratulations on being the 2024 Mastermind Champion. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. And that was Ruth. Um, so obviously, because she had to go, we had to kind of focus on Ruth. But um, Ollie, you're going to have to go relatively soon. So I'm interested yeah. in your uh, specialist subject round because very often the mantra for people um is don't pass um you you were a very quick passer was that a tactical thing that rather than thinking rather than throwing out an incorrect answer i'm just going to pass very quickly and move on yeah i think the tactic was basically if i didn't know it straight away don't waste time thinking about it and i i don't think i was pulling any of the ones i passed anyway so i think i think it worked out okay i mean i came last but <laughs> I, th I think i think it was the right thing to do i, I, th I think and more correctly you came what six out of 96 or whatever it is in the series i mean it yeah. was um you know plenty of people who would have liked to have been in your position um 
So yeah, I mean, let's say it was it was interesting. Again, with your specialist subject, was there anything that you kind of are now kicking yourself on that you felt you should have got? There felt like there was a few, like um, a goot, the Spanish guy. Who, um... Yeah, yeah, I I should have I should have remembered that. I I do remember that story, but it just mm. it just didn't come up in my revision. And yeah, I think the rankings questions felt a bit tricky. Mm. I'd, I'd I'd like yeah. revise some of the more obvious rankings, like Ivan Isovich and Rossol, who had like yeah. really high rankings. But yeah, maybe maybe missing the tournament director was bad because I just didn't <laughs> think to revise that. But yeah, yeah. But you can't be expected to know the ranking yeah. of every player of in every tournament over twenty odd years. Um, that that was tricky. Uh, the only other player who, who passed, I think, um, was you, Sarah. Um, <laughs> Sorry, um, that's just my that's my nerd lip. <laughs> it happens a lot. <laughs> um, again, with you, was there anything kind of tactical about that? You know, um, about your passes rather than throwing out an answer was, or is it just what felt right on the day? Um, I think it. I think the one that well, the the two that I remember passing on in the final, it was just that no name would come to my mm. head, and my brain's going tick 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 tick. Come on, pull something out, mm. and it's just like no, I'm not even going to go for any kind of mm. weird what I call guest passes, where mm. it's just you'll ch chuck anything out, but sometimes your brain just won't even give you mm. even an, a micron of information to chuck out. So it's like nah, mm. I'm passing. Yeah. Whereas Helen and George, I don't think either of you passed or maybe yeah i don't think either you passed deliberate ploy yeah because i i missed out on passes in 2019 and permanently starred so yeah, yeah. just always <laughs> say something yeah I, I passed one in the general knowledge oh. round but not in the uh not in the yeah. specialist subject yeah i still need to apologize to you ollie for passing on a tennis question <laughs> yeah, I was I was silently screaming that. No, <laughs> even in the chat, going, "Oh God, Ollie's going to kill me." I, I, th I think the award um, for most boring question of the night, um, Sarah, uh, Sarah, you had that with the price of a first-class stamp. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm just loath to criticise question writers, but I have to say that just didn't feel quite. It felt like a pub quiz question to me, but. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, it feels like, thing, feels like one of the things they they'd ask a politician to try and paint them out of tears. Like, what's the cost of a yeah? And they'll go four pounds yeah. or something. Because <laughs> <laughs> Rishi Sunak doesn't buy his own stamp sort of. <laughs> yeah, that, that stamps? just that just felt weird. Um, <laughs> Ollie, I, in, in last place at um, halfway. So knowing you're going first. Um, I mean, you're an experienced quizzer. We saw you've been on University Challenge. Um, we know that you play Quiz League of London. You're a very, very good, you know, accomplished player. What were your, what was your kind of hope at halfway then that you might be able to do in in the second half? Yeah, as like disappointing as it, as it sounds, my my plan was just to try and not come last, which I didn't manage to do. But yeah, my my ploy was just try to do as well as I could in the general knowledge and. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the passing strategy came back because I just wanted to hear as many questions as I could and get as many right as I could. And I think, for me, my my general knowledge set was probably the one that I liked least out of everyone's. So it was a bit unfortunate, but I think I did okay. We we all we all did quite quite evenly on the general knowledge. It was just purely yeah. down to the specialist subject. Well, you you got the... questions that somebody my age would have absolutely... But it was an age thing, the Madonna thing, the Point Sisters thing. It's yeah. like, that was really tough look for somebody who... Yeah, I know, I know the Point Sisters. It, just, I, it was just that uh, if it didn't come to me straight away, I was just passing yeah. it. Yeah. For you who um, had this one, um, have a question about right angle triangle. Although that wasn't me, that wasn't me. Uh, oh, I, 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 had, I would have I loved that, that one. I would have loved I, that. I, I you had not Oh, oh yeah, you, you, oh. Ollie, you had um, the Fibonacci one. Oh, Fibonacci. Helen, oh doing yeah, that, that was sort nice. Of I don't love that. Yeah. No, apparently that. Um, <laughs> yeah, we should have Pythagoras, swapped those. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd have happily swapped yeah. that. Um, <laughs> at that Pythagoras one, apparently, it's quite famous. That particular combination of three numbers. Who knew? Yeah, I think like three, four, and five is the most famous, and then like that that's literally... it. That's the one I know. Yeah, yeah mm. three. Mm. Sorry, five, twelve, and thirteen is literally the I only one. I can't believe you were the square roots in your head, Helen. Like five square plus twelve squared. <laughs> oh no! Oh, you'd have been very welcome to that one. <laughs> yeah, the num the numbers questions tonight were, yeah, were not. Yeah, 
what you couldn't <laughs> see on my one is is out of shot. My hand is drawing a cylinder in midair just oh, below wow. the camera line. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how, how did you do that, Sarah? Give, give us a. It was it was sort of all right. Okay, I was sort of doing that, but you can't quite see because my hands are in my lap. <laughs> but I was kind of drawing it, just like okay, what's that? <laughs> And hoping my maths teacher didn't sort of was watching and thinking, you better get it right. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you, you still got 13, Ollie. So I think your past strategy did give you the the number of questions you were looking for. And I guess when you've been in last place um, at halfway, then it's no it's no worry. Yeah, you, there's no point worrying about passes, point, is there? Yeah. It's, it's all yeah. about points at that point. Um, yeah. So the 13 and 21 points overall, um, you know, we've heard plenty of times this series of people being happy to get over 20. It's a nice kind of um, benchmark to, to reach and 21 in the final. Uh, very good score. How do you, you know, come away from it? Was this your first time in, in Mastermind? Yeah, already? first time. Yeah. 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 So have you come away from it thinking, OK, I, you know, I, I know what's needed next time round to win it. Um, will you go for it again? I'll definitely try again. Yeah, it's just yeah, trying to come up with some good specialist subjects again. But yeah, yeah. I, I really, really enjoyed the whole experience, and I'll definitely oh, try that's again. Good. Yeah, and and you should you should take great pride in it. Say so there are many many people who've never made a mastermind uh, grand final. Um, I made three semifinals, never got to the final. You know, it's you know you made that step. You 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 did well. Um, represented yourself well. Um, so yeah, take great pride in that. Um, now, obviously, you're welcome to stay with us, Ollie. But I do know you've also got a party to get back to. So, yeah, um, yeah. If, if you if you want to disappear at this point, feel free to do so. But thanks so much for coming on, Ollie. Yeah, lo lovely to see you all again. Yeah, yeah. well done, everyone. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, right. Cheers. Yeah. Thanks. See you guys later. Bye. -bye. Yeah. Um, so all of you were in a position that you'd seen Ollie go first. And, and get uh, eight, and then Ruth get 15, which I think that's the sort of score that puts the cat amongst the pigeons, because you don't quite know what the benchmark is for the episode. Um, Helen, how were you feeling um, as the next person to go after those two um, scores? I mean, I was trying to block out what had just happened. Um, I knew... I mean, in the past, I've been good on specialist subjects. I kind of wasn't so much tonight. Um, but you have to try and block out what other people are doing, really, yeah. because it, it's all about them is their, what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, um, some journalist tweeted last night, oh, my God, if I had to go on after Ruth, I'd just forfeit. And I replied with a sort of laugh emoji. <laughs> you don't really have that option of just going, OK, fine, I'm out, I'm out. <laughs> um, I just wanted to get my thing done and yeah, yeah didn't go all that well but uh yeah yeah about uh, you the other two sarah george you know did did it kind of up the ante for you or did, or you, did you just go about things as you, you were planning to do anyway i think ruth absolutely nailing it because I'd, I'd, I'd said to, to my husband and I'd, I'd said to somebody else it's like if somebody absolutely nails their specialist subject i'm just there for fun after that because <laughs> I wasn't as secure with that specialist subject as I was my previous two. So it was always going to be, well, you've just got to see what goes on. So it was just a matter of, I was probably more relaxed because I'd taken the expectation off myself. Mm. But there, there were some questions in my specialist that I wouldn't have gotten in a thousand years. Yeah. And George, you, you, were, you were sixth in line, which is an unusual position because you only get to be in that position if you're in a Mastermind Grand Final. Does it feel like a long wait when you're seeing everybody going? Oh, it does, and, and, and it's an even longer wait when you watch it on telly because you've got the video packages in there as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was. I was kind of in the position, uh, same position as Sarah was. I, I thought I'm going to have to completely nail this to be in with a chance. And I got a few wrong, so that kind of led me just to, mm. you know, a bit, bit like Ollie really. Think of the general knowledge is kind of a free hit. I'm just here to have fun. Uh, but yeah, it definitely ups the ante when someone gets 15. Uh, I mean, I got all of them right in the. Um, specialist knowledge round uh, in the heats and the semis but like Sarah I wasn't as comfortable with my specialist subject in the final mm -hmm. as the previous two for the simple reason I didn't think I would get to the final at all so I hadn't really given much thought to what my uh, third specialist subject was going to be. Same. <laughs> yeah. I've I mean, used to all my good ones. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all relating to this George. 
Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, well, well Sarah, the other you... thing is such little time between the semi and the final. Yeah, that's the other thing. It's about seven weeks as opposed to three months for uh, for you to study. Um, I, 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 will, I will say, Sarah, you like you clearly had revised very well because I was I was talking to Sarah in the in the um, the green room beforehand, and uh, I said to her just by way of uh, sort of a conversation time, I said I actually know a couple of people who were nominated for the Mercury Prize. Um, they were their group was the Token Jazz nominee in 2017, and Sarah said, "Oh, dinosaur!" I was like, "Yeah, you've done your research." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd learnt token jazz once. <laughs> <laughs> but they're going to come up, aren't they? Oh, yeah. They, yeah, they're going to try and bring out different styles. You know, so when you're anticipating the questions, you're going to have to be thinking. They're not just all going to ask about big established bands that everybody knows. There's going to be something that's hip hop. There's going to be something that's kind of jazz or you know very avant garde. So you know, and you you covered that um, very nicely. Um, just didn't know John Standing the. Uh, actor that kind of came no, out of the field. I went back and you. found it afterwards, though. It's like, yeah, it got mentioned once. Ooh, oh, but funny. I think that's that thing. I, I think if you do that depth of knowledge, most mm. of the things are in the sort of top 60%, and then they have what mm. I call the A-star questions that are really going to sort mm. of find yeah. you out. And I, I managed to get lucky on the ones in my first two rounds, really mentioned once stuff, but that mm. one just, just never even... I never even clocked it until I actually went and found it again. Yeah. yeah. Tricky. But, yeah. yeah. I mean, the, how were they to know that The Piano is one of my all-time favourite films, one of my all-time <laughs> favourite soundtracks? It's like, oh, yeah, Michael Nyman, I'll get that one. <laughs> uh, we, we have, as I think most of you know, a prediction competition that's been running. Um, these were the top predictions for your subject. So, <laughs> um, uh, oh. Francis Bacon... Um, that might not be the people might have got their Francis Bacon's confused. I'm not sure. But, um, <laughs> uh, how how did these look to you, Sarah? These these were the two top ones for you. That were they actually a Boss Bossini and George Dyer? Does it? Oh no, hang on, that's not you. No, um, no, uh, you got lot me there. Sorry, I'm confusing. Yeah. That's Ruth. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to ask you what you think of Ruth's um, top predictive ones. That would be unfair, sorry. Uh, Sappho um, for Helen. Aphrodite came up, didn't it? Uh, Lucadian one. Cliffs. Yeah, I, I, that would have been a good one because there was a whole mythology around her throwing herself off the cliffs because of a man, which was obviously very subversive because she was a famous lesbian or something. Mm. Um, I guess it was quite hard to phrase a question because it's not a biographical thing and it's not in her poetry. Yeah. But it's quite a famous thing associated with her. Yeah. Uh, for the Mercury Prize, we had uh, Gorillas and PJ Harvey. Um, mm. PJ yeah, Harvey pretty won good twice, players, didn't he, I think. Yeah, PJ Harvey's the only person to win it twice. So I suppose the obvious first in the chair question would either have been who won it first, which was the one they gave me, yeah. or who's won it, who's the only person to win twice, and that's PJ. Yeah. And then Gorillas is the only band who withdrew their nominate, who withdrew from the nominations. So mm. that would have been again. It's 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 a nice sort of little mm. nugget of information. Yeah, excellent. And uh, and George and yours, uh, Franz Liszt and Leipzig. I don't think either of those came up. No, um, they, I mean, others they, did. Other predictions came through, but not that those two. Yeah, uh, Liszt. Liszt is a decent shout. He was a pianist who. Uh, he Clara Schumann was not very uh, enamoured of his compositional style and found him quite boorish at a personal level. Um, Leipzig, I think. I mean, I did get asked what was the name of the of the concert hall in Leipzig, yes. where uh, Clara Schumann made her debut as a soloist. I think Leipzig's not the answer to a que mastermind question. I think it's something Clive says in the intro. Because mm. I'm because I'm forever watching other people's specialist subjects, and the one thing I know about them, and which is my only chance to get a point, is said in the intro. I think yeah, that, totally. that's the kind of thing <laughs> that does come up a lot. So, um, so those were the, the most popular guesses. These were the scores for this week. Chris Dyson uh, got seven points. Ed Mason, who was in second overall, got five. As in Nick Reed, Toby Atala, Pam, who's in our chat. Um, no, Pam, you didn't get 20 points in the predictions <laughs> to win. Uh, you did get four. Phil Pizer got four. Benny Three, Huang Yi won, and Michael McPartlin won. So subject to protest and audit, uh, Chris, get in. Um, <laughs> to subject to protest and audit, uh, this is the final result of the competition. Philip Isaac won with 78 points. Ed Mason second. 
Pam Douglas third. So well done to them. Ed Mason being our top Patreon member um, gets a uh, gets a prize, which we will talk to him about in due course. But thank you to everybody who's played the competition. Um, and also, massive thank you to Valerie, who sat next to me, who does all the hard work on the competition, um, getting all the uh, submissions in, putting them in tab tabular form, keeping an eye on all the answers, um, totalizing everything. So yes, um, a big effort um, on Valerie's part for the last 31 weeks. Um, so well done to you, Valerie, you. for that. Um, so uh, interestingly, uh, there's a number of things I'd like uh, want to ask about. Um, one, we heard from George and we heard kind of from Sarah about kind of expectations were perhaps not um not the highest maybe um it, within the final um what were your expectations when you came into you know when you signed the black chair for the first time I, don't I... fall over don't come last <laughs> <laughs> that that was all we wanted just not disgracing myself in the first for, first round and that everything after that was just a bonus mm. I mean, I mean, with regards to the chair, this is generally not a show of bravado, but I did not fe find it as intimidating as I thought it would. And I was explaining this to someone earlier because, um, you know, you when you see it on TV, you're looking at the whole thing from a different angle from what you are when you're actually in the chair. And for me, and this might not be the case for everyone, but for me, it defamiliarized it and made it less akin to the thing that you've seen on TV a billion times you've mm. built up in your mind. It felt like something novel to me. And for that reason, it kind, it kind of felt all right. Mm. Interesting. Did you, I was did petrified. You... <laughs> I mean, after, after my heat, one of the one one of the girls at work said her children. She'd watched it with her two sons, and they said, "Does she always breathe like that?" Like, <laughs> just oh. terrified. But you do see people, you know, having to, you know, controlling their breathing, you know, because that is important to try and get yourself on some sort of, you know, level keel. Um, but you know, George, when you first when you first sat in that chair, were you thinking my ambition? You know, you know, were you thinking like Sarah, don't fall over, don't come last, mm -hmm. or were you thinking, I reckon I've got a realistic chance of winning this heat or winning I, the semi final, whatever? What was your expectation? I did in the heat, um, just because based on uh, watching Mastermind before, generally I've got between 10 and 18 uh, in the general knowledge. Mm. And so I thought, right, if I nail my specialist subject, I will, and I do what I'm capable of in the uh, general knowledge, I actually got 10, which is towards the lower end of what I usually do watching on telly. I thought, unless I'm up against someone who's really, really good, like sort of mm -hmm. finalist caliber, someone like Helen Sarah, basically, um, mm -hmm. or any of the finalists, I thought I'll probably win the heat. And then the semi final, I went in with the exact opposite mindset, thinking, all right, I've had me fun. Uh, these people seem to know what they're about. I mean, uh, Steve Dodding got 29 in the first round mm. and i thought well if he replicates that i'm toast now as it happens he didn't but i just thought all right after this i'll be able to catch up on my video games and my telly and all the rest and then had to get back on the horse <laughs> so yeah, yeah. No, um semi-finals was my aim and i achieved it so you know what's not to yeah. like and helen you're a different kettle of fish altogether because <laughs> okay. this was your first tilt at the at third tilt at the title um and we talked before about kind of um you know how those kind of have helped helped you prepare but when you went into that first um match did you think okay you know that the the minimum is semi-final but the aim is final what was your your thinking no 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 i, I never i never think like that it, I, and having had two disappointments it was just like just keep going just literally put mm. one foot in front of another if you say targets like that you you're setting yourself up to fail maybe that works for some people mm. but for me I, there's no way and i knew i was a much better quizzer than i was five years ago four years ago um but that doesn't mean anything no. because it's a completely different environment so i just wanted to do myself justice in the two rounds and mm. see what happens and that's what made it nice getting through the semi because i had no no expectations it was a complete shock yeah um, we've got a comment here from Lewis, our friend Lewis. Um, hey, all just popping in. Great final. Um, 
Great fun to another great mastermind series. Huge performances from everyone. Um, Lewis, you missed um, Ollie and our champion Ruth. They were on earlier, so catch that up if you will. But it's good to see you, Lewis. Um, it was a good final. It was a very good series. One thing I really enjoyed, Helen, how you slipped your um, Brentford uh, logo um, in and your no, VT. No, no, no. I, 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 think, I think just an illusion. I think you. <laughs> no, it, it was the most branded thing I could get away with wearing because they were like, oh, no, 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 you can't wear that. But it doesn't say any words. It's literally yeah. it's a picture of a bee and some numbers could mean anything, right? <laughs> you know, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly, you know, you know. exactly. <laughs> well, we spotted it. Um, was there anything uh, else, you know, George and Sarah, anything that you kind of, when you've got the VT and you potentially got people in your house or whatever, were there any sort of considerations like that of, oh, I want this shown or I want to kind of represent that? And, or, or is it just, oh, God, I don't want my house to look a mess? Um, you know, what, what's he thinking when you when you got the cameras coming around? That wasn't our house. I was it not? <laughs> no, that was the first thing I said, you're not coming around. This is the tidiest room in our house. <laughs> all right. Is, we, we, all of that was done at the HD9 building, the rehearsal rooms. So right. was, oh, okay. the sofa bits was one of the officers. So, so which was nice for the camera crew because it meant we got lots of lovely flexible space. So, <laughs> I'm eternally grateful to Sarah and, uh, and and Paul and Megan for letting us use the space. But yeah, that was that was all done at the rehearsal rooms. Wow! So Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> Wonderful, George. How about you? Um, yeah, we we tidied the house to an extent. Um, the the down the downstairs got tidied, um, and the uh, basically my partner and I both did English lit degrees, and we buy too many books, so there's just big piles of them on the floor in the spare room. Um, I think the thing I, I maybe would have liked to go in the VT is so one of my interests outside of quizzing is mahjong, which I got into in. Uh, lockdown. I've actually represented Great Britain at Mahjong a couple of times, uh, and so I did a little demonstration with the tiles. But I, I, you know, the game's hundreds of years old and quite complex. I don't think it's easily communicable to a uh, to a BBC Two mass audience. Um, so, but I, I was happy they um, and they got to come and see our quiz team, and I'm happy they left at half time, and I'm happy that was the half we did really well, and <laughs> not the, and not the second half where we nearly threw it away. Sadly, they. Um, clipped out the answer which was uh, the, the rock band Biffy Clyro was the answer and I did preface uh, me giving the answer with their proper rubbish <laughs> 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 but they, they, they did, they did clip, clip that out presumably for being a bit pejorative I suspect so how disruptive is that filming is it like does it take out a day does it take out a half a day what, what kind of does it affect your prep at all for the final or is it when is it done it is was it a done couple of days after? for me yeah, because the, the, the trip over to Salford was a day and then the stuff around Home Firth was, was, was the second day. Yeah. Okay, so a couple of days. Yeah, and I was that... there with my little quizlets in the corner. Yeah, so it is, it is during your revision period that they do this? They don't... Yeah, it was yeah. about two weeks before the final. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was all put together quite quickly, actually. I mean, my, oh, yeah, mine I only had only... one day. Yeah, yeah, yeah mine yeah, was... Mine was a day and an evening because uh, they kind of got everything done that they wanted to do. They came back in the morning so we could do the video call with uh, Ista. And then, yeah, the camera crew just went off and had a look around a stately home and then came to uh, Pontefrax in the evening, which is the furthest field I went from Leeds. It's about 15 miles. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, it is, it is, I guess it is interesting. It's part of the deal, isn't it, that you get to finally have to do that VT thing. But I guess it's probably... Um probably the last thing you need when you just want to get that, well, that was it. I, I hadn't even thought about that so when we were doing the follow-up after the final after the semi-final and i'm already thinking i'm gonna miss my plane i'm gonna miss my plane um it was like yeah we'll be in touch with about your vt and i'm like my what oh no <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'd not watched mastermind before um the previous series and I and I, I actually didn't didn't watch last uh, last season's final because uh, for for various reasons I think I just got too behind with it. So I didn't know a that there were six people in the in the final um, and b that they actually did these VTs because I I thought oh it's an hour long but there's only fifty percent more people are they must ask them more questions and yeah so <laughs> that was the first I really knew of it. Oh wow! Last year's oh. winners VT was where I got the idea for flashcards from. Uh, oh, really? Ooh, that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, Brendan's been here. It's uh, 
it's cheap and nice compared to the old, I think it means days when people used to get go to exotic places. Yeah, Remember yeah, yeah. Michael McPartland? Yeah, Michael McPartland went to Salem, Massachusetts. I think Paul Steeples went to New York. I think I, I picked, if I'd have got to the final one year, I picked the, the Texas Revolution because I felt there was no way they could not send me to Texas. <laughs> they could. I, I, I didn't get to go to Lesbos. Ah. <laughs> I I to go again. Anchor. I think I'm going to go for Angkor Wat. <laughs> yes. Well, now, yes. now they, they sadly don't send you on these yeah. things. No, I mean, uh, Diane Halligan, who plays in the same league as me, yeah, uh, love Diane. been on Mastermind, mm. and uh, she got to go to St. Petersburg, which obviously you're not allowed to do anymore, not just because of the budget. Mm. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Diane's wonderful. Well, I, I think I was she was on the same series as me last time I was on, I think, actually. Oh, really? Nice. Um, now, I, when, I, when they told me I was going to the Six Music Studios, I was really ridiculously giddy <laughs> so my, my poor husband got a near splitting phone conversation yeah. <laughs> oh, no, um so uh we've i think we've covered off uh, special subjects so at the end of the first half um ruth got her 15 um and then you all have to try and do a general knowledge score that is somehow going to make you competitive um with that and i think Ollie put in a good score, 13, but 21 was never going to um, yeah, beat Ruth, I think, at that point, and, and almost certainly not beat the, the rest of you, as it turned out, it didn't. Um, uh, Helen, you were next, I think, yeah. and you got 15. That was a pretty awesome general knowledge round. Um, did you feel that there was there was more left on the table, or, or was that about as good as it was going to get for you? Um, well, yeah, looking at the ones I got wrong, yeah, that's absolutely fine. But I just had the mentality of, well, clearly this is not going to happen for me. Just do one more set, just let everything go and mm. just bash away, like like you've been bashing away for months and months on general knowledge mm. sets and just go for it and, yeah. I mean, 15 took you to 25, which is always going to be a potential winning score. Um so yeah you were right in it um and then uh, did, did, i think it was you george was it i mean i can't remember the, no, the order next. seven x yeah. oh you you next sarah and um you you 14 which is still a great score just fell a bit a uh, bit short of, of i was happy with that yeah <laughs> i was happy with that it's like i might not have won but i got to go to six music and i got 14 in general knowledge so i don't think i've disgraced myself and it's Definitely the ones not. you pull out from the back of your brain from nowhere. It's like, where did I get that from? Yeah. 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 Impressed with the gallbladder answer, I have to say. Very good. Um, but, um, yes, just, uh, just a it's very... The, it's, the, it's the usual absolutely no poker face. You know if I know it or I don't. <laughs> There's no hiding. No. Um, and they start asking you about your favourite, one of your favourite books. I love Nick Holmby. It's just like, have a oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Like, yes, you saw that big grin. Definitely, definitely. Um, and uh, George, with you, um, how do you feel about the Richard Osman answer? What, what, what I, happened there? Did you say Osmond? Because obviously we haven't played it back or whatever. What happened I, with that one? I was told by the producers I said Osmond. I the the look, I know I know it's Osman. You know I know it's Osman. Um, I I'd seen the book on the shelves at W H Smith the day before mm. the yeah, recording. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, so I I either put and they said on the um on the recording they reviewed the tape and I had sort of said Osman and I was I was thinking pretty sure I haven't. Um, but I in fairness I did. Uh, like later when I was alone, I did just say the word Osman to myself. I was like, no, that's rubbish. And then I said it a few times to myself in a normal voice. And I thought, yeah, actually, just because the way I speak, you could construe that as mm. being Osman. But like, I, I have talked to people who said, like, if I'd said that in a pub quiz or like a quiz league, mm. then they probably would have, uh, they probably would have allowed. The intent was to say Osman, uh, yeah. certainly. Yeah, I, I think we all thought it was a bit harsh, didn't we? Yeah, so, yeah. I'd, I'd be. They kept us waiting for ages on that. Yeah, yeah they did. I, I'd have been annoyed if it had, um, you know, affected my placing, but it didn't. I still would have come fifth, even if I got, I'd have got twenty-three rather than twenty-two. Yeah. So it, it doesn't really matter. The the other two questions I was um, 
kicking myself for not getting. So, uh, firstly, uh, Paul Novak being the head of uh, TUC and mm. not GMB. I'm an officer on my local trade union branch. Mm. So, that's the kind of thing I really should have got. And the other one was um, uh, tamagoyaki, uh, the, the, the Japanese egg dish. Um, mm. Uh, which again, that's annoying because I actually speak a little Japanese. Uh, oh, Tamagotchi! Uh, ah, uh, yeah, yeah, ta yeah. Tama means egg. Yeah, and mm. yaki just means um, like well, some kind of cooking or something or something like that. And the reason that you might have thought octopus was a kind of bizarre answer, but the reason is there's something called takoyaki, takoyaki. which is uh, octopus. Uh, mm. So that was the thinking behind. I knew it wasn't uh, right, but uh, I mean, I, I'd let my Japanese learning slide because I was revising for Mastermind. So let that be a lesson to everyone. <laughs> Keep up with Duolingo. Yeah. <laughs> Um, with the Richard Osman answer, um, did they stop the recording to review that, or was it reviewed mm. after the end of the round? It was after, yeah. Uh, yeah. They didn't they didn't stop it, which I was kind of uh, thankful for. And then there was a pause before mm. Clive read the score, and I was thinking, all right, something's happened here. And I, I genuinely could not think what it could have possibly been. Yeah. No, so it didn't throw didn't. you then, in the moment, thinking you'd given the right answer, and then you're told it's wrong? No, it no, I thought you. I'd given the right answer, because it had yeah. been accepted. The intention was to say Osman. So yeah. I hadn't even um, uh, considered the possibility that the, the point would be uh, taken but away. Did, did oh. they edit that close, it was Osman thing? Was that edited? But Was that spliced? That was done in, in post. That must have been done in post. Cause right, I okay. That. Yeah. Wow, okay, so... Yeah, so that's why it didn't throw throw you because you didn't. Yeah, know no. it was... <laughs> as did the rest of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thought it was right because it was, but <laughs> yeah. VAR. No one likes VAR. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, uh, chance to be a fine thing in League One. Um, but hey, proper City fan here. <laughs> oh, I am you sorry, Sarah. Not League One. Um, <laughs> Um, going into um, the last couple of rounds then, you're still in the lead, Helen. Did you start to get the glimmer that this might happen? Or, I mean, it was it was snuffed out by Thomas, but did, did yeah. you kind of start to get the feeling? No, no. I, I was happy that I was leading for at least some of the final, but I knew realistically I was too far behind and I knew how good those two would be. So no, I, no, I never. Yeah. But you were Podium legendary finish. at general knowledge, Helen. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Absolutely yeah. brilliant. No one could ever take away the fact that you top scored on general knowledge in <laughs> my grand final. I um, take what I can, but yeah, no more poetry for me. <laughs> um, so yes, yeah, so you, 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 were, you were overtaken by one point and then Ruth came through. We heard from Ruth earlier about her experience in that, that general knowledge round. But it must have felt when you were watching it early on and she got Dame, she got 31 and then, then five incorrect, that actually this had the potential to be one of those horrible situations where somebody crashes and burn. I mean, it, it, George, what were you thinking when you were watching that early part of, of her round? I was just hoping she she wouldn't, uh, you know, she wouldn't uh, you know, throw away what she'd done with an excellent um, first round because I, I thought like she's put herself in this great position, you know, it's going to be a real shame if she, uh, you know, does no disrespect to Thomas or anyone else, but it's going to be a, a real shame if she doesn't manage it. And like, she made an insane comeback at the end, uh, mm. at the end there, just like incredible coolness under pressure. Whereas I got like my last four questions wrong or so. so. <laughs> yes, she, she got, yeah, she got, I think 11 out of the last 12 or something yeah. like that. It was just uh, a phenomenal run. Um, so she's a lovely person and a great winner, and, and we heard about you all going out. But I guess the the question is for from me: having been in a grand final, does this kind of make you more hungry for more of this? I mean, George, you talked about completing the Holy Trinity. Is it completed, or is it completed when you win Mastermind? 
I, I ain't doing any televised quizzes for a good few years after okay. this. I'm not champing at the bit to, to get back on TV anytime soon. Because the thing I've been telling people is I've, I've been putting out two pretty contradictory messages to people. The first of which is I would really recommend doing Mastermind because it's an amazing experience. You get to meet some great people. The producers are all really lovely. And if you think you can't do it, you can. You've got that subject in your life where you know more about it than the vast majority of the people. You can easily turn that into a specialist subject. Like you'd be amazed how much information the human brain can absorb once you really get down to studying. So I've been telling people that. I've simultaneously been telling them this was a horrendous ordeal uh, <laughs> mentally and physically, which uh, I never want to repeat for a good few years. It is one of the hardest things I have ever done in my life. Don't do this to yourself. So those have been the uh, <laughs> two messages I've been putting out there. Uh, that was a pretty good summary, uh, Sarah. What uh, your 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 take on it? With um, you know, you, you didn't fall over, you didn't no. come last. You Although we did have to me retake me walking to the chair in the semi. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I did wrong. <laughs> um, so you know, with this experience over, has it whetted your appetite? Would you do it again? Yeah, yeah. and yeah. Yeah. A couple of applications may have gone in. There's another one sat on my iPad waiting to be filled. Okay, she got the bug. Well, we look forward to seeing you in uh, in something again uh, in the future. And Helen, three times you've been on. Will there be a fourth? They so have me. Excellent. <laughs> Can we just, just arrange not to be in the same year? I don't want to come up against you again. <laughs> Yeah. yeah no 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 yeah we'll try and stagger it between us we'll try and fix it like that no absolutely i, I want to do more um and yeah. every every disappointment i have just makes me work harder yeah brilliant oh, well that's a, that's a fantastic attitude um and it's also lovely to see um um simon on the on the vt um What's, what's Simon ch chipped in here? Having transcribed several scenes <laughs> worth of GK to help Helen revise, I know the questions are finally generally a little shorter than other ads. So that was in the middle of, midst of some chat. Uh, but how important is it to you to have somebody helping you? How you know, how much of a difference does it make? Um, I mean, assuming Sarah and George, you did have people firing questions at you and, and whatever. You know, how much of a difference does it make to not be completely alone in this? I, I think that, uh, yeah, having someone really helps just because um, you, you, obviously you can't replicate the conditions of being on the show. But what you can do is get used to answering questions verbally rather yeah. than uh, you know, writing them down. So um, I had uh, my partner, Sarah, who you will have seen in the VT, yeah. um, going through the mastermind uh, quiz book and we mm -hmm. covered every question in that apart from some of the specialist knowledge which i knew i didn't know anything, anything about like snakes for instance i thought there's no point in that but uh, most of it and then we got a bunch of old uh, grand prix papers uh, mm -hmm. and which obviously you would normally do uh, as a written paper but again she would fire the questions at me and there were decent length for it uh, for mm -hmm. the most part and i'd just see how i could do um you know answering them verbally so yeah it really does help and of course um testing me on my cue cards and uh, and all the rest like that so, you know I, I don't think there's any substitute for it really yeah sarah did you have that sort of support yeah I, it's, it's it's sort of a bit of i didn't necessarily have mark questioning me on general knowledge but we just watched a lot of quizzes mm. and it was just a matter of can i beat him because he's a pretty good quizzer as well not that he'd like to admit it mm. but can i beat him and can i beat the person on screen and i found mm. through those six or so months from first audition to final i was getting my recall was quicker mm. but then for the, the sort of the specialist subject i'd got electronic um flashcards flash on, yeah. on an app yeah. and yeah. it meant that because my handwriting is absolutely terrible um but just that kind of rapid getting it back getting it back and saying it out loud mm. because that's that's the thing you got it's not just what's up here it's how fast it comes out your mouth and i think yeah. I, and again i found between heat and final when I look at my performance in the heat, there's you could drive a coach and fall through some of those gaps. It's like, what? Get on with it. <laughs> so that was the thing. And because everything, I, we'd recorded everything before my heat went out. And I think that would have been the same for you as well, Helen, because you were towards the end of the heats as well. Yeah. It would have been interesting to have seen my mm. heat before we'd have recorded any more. Because I think mm. I would have thought, oh, God, you better get on with this, Thorns, <laughs> and you better, you better start answering a bit faster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and and Helen, you had Simon, um, who is a very very good quizzer in his own right. Um, I know there was a kind of a self-deprecating comment in in the VT, which is just typical of the lovely guy that he is. He is an absolute <laughs> top bloke. But does having somebody who is very familiar with top level quiz help you in your preparation? You know, he, has he got an eye to kind of spot things, spot gaps that perhaps you might not spot? How does that work in terms of supporting you? Um. I think it helps. I mean, I, I don't think it's a sort of prerequisite for someone helping you out, but just someone who's kind of, he's been on the show before, he was able to transcribe lots of episodes and ask them as if they were real sets. Mm. He's a good editor and writer himself, so he was good at crafting questions and just generally someone who was, you know, happy to be part of that process and i would do the same you know if roles were reversed it's not mm -hmm. like oh, quizzing's your thing it, you know we do this together we, we've got an important qll cut match tomorrow we do that together oh, <laughs> um so yeah just that that's our thing yeah. um i think that's good to have that that sort of understanding even if you have a partner who doesn't really care about any of this but still supports you i, I think you need that because we don't have much of a family so you know we didn't get a huge kind of extended network so we felt we had to do a lot of it ourselves yeah. but yeah it's so important otherwise you, i think you would just get totally wrapped up in your own head if, if it was just you yeah i think it's important and and i think yeah you all seem to benefit in in different ways um and so yeah i mean it's you know, a little bit of what you achieved um, is is shared with with those who helped you get there. Um, I think it's it's good to acknowledge these things. Um, before we wrap up, in um, I don't know, five words, how would you sum up your mastermind experience, uh, Helen? Um, five words. Um, good heat. Good semi final. Meh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I should be more articulate, but it's late. We'll, we'll, we'll count semi final as, as one word uh, for that yeah. matter. That was good, yes. Um, Sarah, how about you? Uh, absolutely terrifying, would do again. Nice. That's a better George. One. <laughs> uh, Clive hates speaking dead languages. <laughs> I, I, well, no, he doesn't. But um, uh, I, because I, I kind of tortured him with uh, Anglo-Saxon in the first round and uh, Old Norse in the second. I thought with the finals, like, well, at least German is a language people still speak, so yes. he should be all right with that. But after I was coming off the stage, having won my semi, uh, I, I shook his hand on the way out, and he, he just said to me with this uh, with this impudent grin, he just said, "Thanks for the Old Norse, mate." <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <coughs> um, well, thank you so much, um, Sarah, Helen, George, for coming on tonight. Appreciate it. I appreciate it. there's loads of people who are probably zapping your messages. And uh, um, be careful of your Facebook message requests. You may well get some very odd ones in there. Um, if my experiences are anything to go by. Uh, thanks also to Ruth and Ollie who were on earlier. Don't forget, if you watch this episode and uh, enjoyed it, then please give us a thumbs up and a like and subscribe if you aren't already subscribed. We're going to be back next week, uh, which will be the last episode, and we'll be covering the University Challenge Grand Final. Um, don't forget to vote for what is the question at tinyurl.com slash WITQ Rome. Uh, and we'll release the Quizzer and Team of the Week votes later in this week um, once we've had time to decompress. Um, thanks to everybody in the chat. There's been stuff going on as usual. Um, Pam is playing Mahjong tomorrow. Um, oh, Gerard, are you having a night on the tiles to practice? Oh. Yes, that is. That is the quality of the chat that we have. Um, but, um, yeah, thanks to everybody who's been watching and everybody who's been chatting away. Um, again, once more, thanks to Sarah, Helen, and George, uh, Ruth, and Ollie. We'll be back next week, and we'll see you again soon. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks for having us.